Hello everybody to the week three of the Discord Football League. We got a jam-packed uh, turn of events and matchups that will be later that of course we'll be taking up here. And the first one will be the Cool Kids Clan Red Names who have a record of zero and two the actual worst team in the DFL when they take on the one and one team of the St. John Saints. Let's see how this is gonna turn out for them. I hope the Saints lose, it would be hilarious. Wait funny. Be Seems like Red Names won the coin toss. And they're gonna run it down the field here. Ooh, and immediately gets tackled. Disastrous on their end. Ready, break. St. John Saints, one and one record. Red Names looking to get their first ever win here, and CEO's gonna run it to the first down, but he immediately gets tackled there. Ain't no way, 26 yard run. The St. John Saints looks like their defense isn't looking so good right now. Here we go, CEO. Thinking about it, and he gets sacked by Nick Bennett there. Amazing 10 yard loss. Actual horrible, so bad. Go. No, let's not go. Let's go. Okay, nice move there. Immediately you see him get tackled upon. Okay, is this thing working? Okay, obviously it is. Okay. We go throwing it long here, and immediately you see Chad catches that on the field, though. Great play there by the Red Names. I hate Chad, DC. He's only saying this because he beat them last week. True. Sure. It seems like they're going for the punt. Arizona kicks it. And it looks like it's going to be out of bounds there. What? What just happened? Well, okay, apparently it seems like, the, yeah, they're going to start at the one yard line. They got it out of bounds enough to get it at the one. They get tackled here. It might be a safety. He's passing it here to Tim Farr. Running back gets to a first down, though. He's gonna take us far. And the red names are in shambles right now. <laughs> the other defense can play against St. John's. They're playing home stadium, of course, and you see Ray Hudden thinking about it, going for the pass here to, to Bennett. And oh, he let's gets go. tackled out 38 yards. 40 yard catch there by Jerome Bennett. And we're already down to the second quarter of the game. Red names oh zero, St. John Saints zero. That might soon change before halftime. Ray Hudden immediately gets sacked there by Mobz <laughs> Mobzilla sacked his own team. This is this is very clearly not me. If you if you did the math, this is very clearly my um. You mean do the math? Twin. You don't need to do math. You don't need to know math to know who I have a calculator with me. Like Ray One Hudden sec, going out five, for long here, and it looks like it's tackled by Clinton. Five eight gets to get him out zero of here. zero eight. Haha. <laughs> Disastrous. Right now, it seems like St. John's, they're not really throwing some long passes. They're kind of taking things one step at a time. Passes it to Tim Farr, and Tim Farr is going to make it out for the first down, and it's going to be a touchdown there. 43-yard run by Tim Farr. Did you Farr. know? Red names are now losing in this game. If yeah, you I know, put, boy. You put five, 58,000 and eight into Mom's a calculator. Really learned about flip it upside today. down. That's what they did in fifth grade. Those dudes, it's incredibly funny. Peak comedy. Here we go, going for the kickoff. And Chad's going to be receiving it here. You see him running it and just immediately gets tackled near the 20. And now it's time for the Red Names. Let's see what they can do with if they can get a touchdown before, before you know, halftime. So passes it down to the running back. Mosin gets out nine yards. I don't think it was enough for a first down, though. It's definitely going to be, you know, second and inch. Yeah, second and one. Here we go. Passes it. And now Mosin's running it out on the field once again. There seems like they're going for a lot of inside runs in this. And the Red Names call for a timeout. They know that that's their best strategy here. They have, like, what, two timeouts left in this game. You can see, yo. Think about going long here, and he passes it out, and it might have been a catch by Curry, though. But instead, Linnell Clement, 99 overall, blocks him. 
valuable asset to the St. John Saints. You'll see, he passes it down to Chad, and Chad's gonna run this thing, and he gets planted and loses one yard there, and the Red Names are calling for another timeout. They have one more left in this game. The Saints just not even worried at all. They have all of their timeouts. This isn't even their play, so they're gonna let it run, and you see Mosin going in, and it might have been, yep, it's gonna be fourth and short. This time, St. John Saints went for the timeout. And now the Red Names are either gonna go for the they're gonna go for the kick or they're gonna go for a play here. It seems like they're going for a kick. Receiving it. Arizona. Gonna kick this thing out of bounds. It's gonna be a touchback here for the St. John Saints. But it doesn't matter because it's gonna be halftime. And with halftime, it seems like the St. John Saints are gonna be receiving the ball in the second half. Red Name still got a chance to recover here. Brilliant kick by Bootius Maximus. And now you see Tim Father running back, running it out here. He jukes that guy. Oh my goodness oh, okay, gracious, okay. 46 yards out on the field. Tim Farr gets it halfway down the halfway down the court here. Brilliant way to start off here for the St. John Saints. Okay, pass it right in and now DJ Tucker. And you see him just juking oh, all of these defenders. 30, let's 40 go. yards in the field. Mobzilla is getting his hopes up. Wait till he plays the Wolves. No, then he'll yay. learn his lesson. They might go two and one after the night. There we go. Ray Hudden. Seems like just one pass could be enough for a touchdown. And wide open was BJ Tucker for a six yard catch. St. John Saints are going to dominate this thing. In My the favorite third quarter. team member. Blowjob Tucker. I like blowjobs? What the fuck? What? Wait, they're going for a two-point conversion, and it seems like it was unsuccessful. Bife Weeder stopped them. First time we've seen him actually, you know, do some plays out on the field. Bife Weeder loves to just sit there and do nothing. It's going to be a touchback here by for the Cool Kids Clan Red Names. There's still a possibility of them tying this thing, but the odds of that are very unlikely considering how they've been playing. Diego's going to throw it out literally just five yards down the field. Not really impressive. At that point, you could have just ran the ball. You would have gotten farther. They're second and nine here. CEO. The guy wide open over there, and there it is. Ryko catches it in time, though, for a 14-yard catch, and it's going to be first down. I hate Ryko. You're the only one that does. I don't think I am. <laughs> The CEO runs it here, and it seems like he listened to me earlier about running the ball here. And look at that. That's how get, that's where it gets you. 15 yard run, you get to a first down. Playing it smart here. That's the only way to get a touchdown around this, these parts. The CEO throws it. One handed catch by Speen the tight end, though. Impressive catch. We're down to the fourth quarter. Red names, they don't have a lot of time to tie this thing. Trust me, trust me. They're going to get like a thousand. They're going to get a thousand touchdowns and we're going to lose. The second and six. Passes it here. And now Ryko's running it for a first down and they get into the 15. 28 yard catch. Their brilliant play. With a minute and 34 seconds left, Red names have a chance of, you know, scoring a touchdown. Might not win this thing unless there's an interception. He passes it down in the field to Ryko, and Ryko gets a touchdown in this game. Mobzilla's in shambles right now. Heaven forbid. Raining. That, heaven forbid that Ryko or Curry. But, oh my goodness gracious. Carlos Patton blocked the kick. Let's go. Let's go, and Carlos. The red names Let's go. Don't, seems like they're not going to tie this thing. He kicks it down to the field. And Tim Farr is going to be receiving the kickoff. See him juking these guys. And of course, couldn't take out two defenders. And now it seems like St. John Saints, they're just going to be stalling the time here. Wasting everything as possible, keeping the ball in their possession. They don't want to make any dumb plays. Passes it to B.J. Tucker. And once again, gets tackled by Mr. Roy1299. And they call a timeout. Red names need to keep the clock stopped as much as possible. Saints need to run it as much as possible. 
And now you see there, Tim Farr is running it out on the field. That guy can't get him. And he manages to get tackled. They're out 74, 76 yards Let's by go. Tim Farr. Impressive. Right near the one yard line. Actually, the five. Guaranteed touchdown for the St. John Saints. If the red names don't get an interception, but it seems like going for inside running, it's going to be a successful touchdown. Two touchdowns in this game by Tim Farr. Tim Farr is the best thing that ever happened to this team. Amazing. Here we go, going for the kick. Right down the middle, it's going to be good. Saints dominating this game with 20 and red name six. Then again, anybody can beat the red names. They're they're a middle school football. This was just their off week. And now here we go, Chad Thundercock running it in the field, and it's going to be near the 15-yard line. Ready Nothing but you can really do with 40 seconds left. Here we go, CEO. And immediately gets sacked there by Jamal Miller. They're going to call a timeout. What are they going to do? Is this going to be a safety? CEO thinking about it. Throwing it here, and it's going to be deflected by Ryan Antoine. This may be the point of the game where, honestly, St. John Saints have just won this thing. Of course we have. Hmm. There you go. He has to be careful. He doesn't get a safety. And now you see great catch there by Chad Thundercock out 25 yards down the field. If they would have been playing like this earlier, maybe they had a chance of winning. But this is, you know, fourth quarter, four seconds left in the game. is going to be the last play. And CEO, what is he going to do with these last moments? Great catch there by Curry. And that's going to be the end of the game here. St. John Saints had an off week tonight by defeating the Cool Kids Clan Red Names 20-6. What, what does Mob have to comment about this? absolutely nothing here we go coming up next we have literally the worst team in the dfl the pickle lake regards well actually not really the worst because they're they're one and one but technically the economists are the worst one of the worst teams in the b conference as they've not won a single game this season do they have the opportunity to turn that around when they face the regards here and we're out here in beautiful economy stadium or whatever this place was called a brilliant kick. And it's going to be a catch here by Trevor Grady. He's going to be out 20 yards on the field. Amazing. Incredible. Astounding. The re-guards, they really don't want to win this thing. The Economist, they need to win this thing. They go and immediately gets the tackle there. Doesn't look so good for, for the Economist. They need to get back in this thing. Ready, break. All I wanted to see was my game, but disastrous. There we go, running it out, and it's gonna be another, another ten-yard run. They're taking things nice and slow. Why are people liking my comment? It was not that. Okay. Here we go. Jackson passes it out to the field to Troy Devlin, and Troy Devlin's gonna do a great 49-yard catch here. Amazing play on there. Here we go. Here in Jackson and pass it to Cornell, the running back, and it's gonna be a touchdown for the Thunder Bay Economist. Brilliant play here. It seems like they have a chance to recuperate, get back into this thing. It's not too late considering we are literally just in the third week of the DFL. Jackson passes it to Cornell and immediately gets tackled there by Mark Fields. Stopped him. No gain yards there. So it seems like there been a turnover, and I guess has it here. He gets tackled. 62 yard kick. There we go. Brilliant run there by Russell Sharp into a first down. I'm going to start commentating like the Madden game of people. 
But they stay quiet the entire game, but they only talk during a touchdown. No brilliant pass there. Anderson, that's it to Harris. Gonna be out eight yards on the field. Not looking good for them right now. Three guards, they gotta tie this thing before we go to halftime. In the second quarter. So Josh Anderson passes it out. Only nine yards. Gonna take things nice and slow. Anderson passes it to Watson and immediately loses three yards in the field there. Why Drew Beck seems like the economist. They might have received a pep talk before this game. And that's exactly why it seems like they've got they're a lot more focused here tonight. Brilliant tackle there once again. Defense wearing them down as much as possible. We go runs it here Russell Sharp it seems like Russell Sharp might be near a touchdown but gets tackled out 27 yards down the field getting closer and closer to a touchdown of course to tie this thing before halftime we go Anderson passes it out immediately you see brilliant catch beautiful catch by Conrad Harris for a touchdown now they're setting up for the kick. Jeffries right down the middle, and this thing's going to be tied. Brilliant play here by, by the Pickle Lake Regards. Looking to go 2 0. Economists, maybe get their first win of the season. They don't want to wait until all the way to like week 10 to get a win. At that point, they'd be mathematically eliminated from the, from the playoffs. There you go. Jackson thinking about it, going long here. Jamal Bryant, great catch there, 37 yards. Jamal Bryant, definitely a star in the Thunder Bay Economist. Here we go, once again, runs it. Not enough for first down, but second and inches, and you see the Economist calling for a timeout. They're trying to save up as much precious time as possible. They don't want to waste these 26 seconds so they can get a touchdown right before right before halftime. So Jackson passes it out to Troy Devlin. Another 13-yard catch. Another timeout by the Economist. Here go runs it down the middle. Another seven yards, getting closer and closer. In for the kick, and the kick is going to be good. Darren Klein making sure that he punts this thing right before halftime so they can get a lead in it. The score is 9-7. to seven. Economy is going to take the lead in this game. Come on, stand up, Thunder Bay. Brilliant catch there by Robert, Robert, Robert Long here. It seems like it's tackled. happened there what the hell happened there absolutely nothing let me tell you that over a run here and another time eight yard run gets tackled disaster Immediately a fumble and he gets recovered though. Regards almost lost the ball there. It would be disastrous for them if they did manage to lose it. Here we go. 
Nice run there by Russell Sharp, and he gets tackled once again. He got a good eight yard run though. Here we go. Russell Sharp right down the middle. Got only eight yards in. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. Here we go. Running it here. Watson. And he's third in inches here. Time has got to be careful. Running it down the middle once again was unsuccessful. Ready, break. Ready. Hut, hut. Here we go. Anderson passes it out along, and another time we get first down. Look for a way for a split second. It's already almost a turnover. Ready, break. Here we go, passes it here. Nice one, and you see Robert Long getting a two yard catch very effortlessly. The ball glitched in his feet for some reason, and they get a touchdown. And the regards are in this game, they're, they're winning it now. Right down the middle, the kick is gonna be good. What all economists really need to do here is get a touchdown since they punted, they made a successful punt earlier. And now the game is up to Thunder Bay at this stage of the matchup. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. Here we go. Nice run here by Kendall Cornell. And Kendall Cornell is gone. 40 into the 55 yard line. Thunder Bay economists are not playing around tonight. I mean, obviously they're playing around. It's a football game, but my goodness gracious. Economist got a chance to recover. Now Daryl Jackson passing it here to Jake Logan, the fullback. 19 yard catch, Economists are gonna win this thing here. With one minute left on the clock. And they're gonna, go, so they're gonna set up for a kick. They're gonna get right down the middle, it's gonna be good. The Economists gotta feel good to get, hopefully, you know, their first win of the season here in front of their home stadium. On the, re the regards, on the other hand, they got to be careful. They got a minute left. They definitely still have a chance to recover in this and win the game. Ready, break. But judging by the Economist's defense, it's going to be pretty difficult to do. Passing it out of the field, and it's going to be a first down, it seems, for the Pickle Lake regards as they call for a timeout. 58 seconds Ready, on the clock. Break. They definitely still have... Yeah, they're near the they're near the 35. They definitely have a chance to get near the end zone. Josh Anderson thinking about going long here. He's wide open. Oh, and he gets it though. Great 31-yard catch for a first down. Robert Long, brilliant play there. The Thunder Bay Economists are kind of just shaking in their boots right now. Got to play strong defense. Play smart defense at that. Running it here, and immediately the quarterback gets sacked by Kenny Rogers, 13 yard loss. And that's exactly what the economists need to do. Pressure the offensive team, pressure the quarterback. And being careful for those wide passes as you see there and out of desperation, pass the ball there. With 18 seconds on the clock, three guards have got to get near the end zone. They got to go for a long play. They're third and 18 here. Risking a fourth down, passing it here, and it's gonna be another tackle into a fourth down. And honestly, they gotta punt this thing. It seems like they didn't punt it. They're so stupid. This is gonna be the last play of the game. They could have punted it and still won by one point. Out on the field and immediately gets tackled. The Economists are gonna win this thing. It's a turnover. Thunder Bay Economists screaming at the top of their lungs as they take home the victory here. Score 16 to 14. Honestly, the Regards could have won this thing if they just went for the punt, if they just went for the field goal at the last seconds of the game to at least win this thing by 17 to 16. But nope, 
Roy, the stupid coach, doesn't know how to coach his football team. And this is the end result. Economist big win here tonight. And coming up next, of course, we have an amazing, amazing matchup with the Klondike Wolves taking on the team of the Louisiana Chicken Sandwich. Of course, a Super Bowl finalist from the second season of the DFL. Of course, Chicken Sandwich got a big opportunity to knock off the Wolves here. I'm, I'm totally not biased in going for the away team. Let's see how this is going to fare. And it seems like Louisiana Chicken Sandwich win the coin toss here, and they're going to start this thing off in their home stadium. That is a a lot of light brown in this stadium here. Brilliant tackle there. Now Louisiana Chicken Sandwich are going to start this thing at the 24-yard line. Sergio Salam, defender Jeremy Spielman, quarterback of the Chicken Sandwich, passes it down the field. Give me second and in inches. Second and in short, actually. Same difference, honestly. If I were them, I would go for an inside run just to guarantee a first down. Spielman's going to pass it here sideways, and it's going to be a great tackle there. Brad and a length three-yard three -yard catch. Didn't really get a lot, you know, a lot down the field. It seems like Chicken Sandwich are taking things at a slow pace. One of these teams are going to be 2-1 and one after tonight. Spielman passes it out on the field, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. Jeremy Spielman got a bit overconfident. Maybe realized that you would have been able to throw the ball all the way from out there, but it was unsuccessful. Here we go. Passes it here to Trey Justice, and Trey Justice is going to run this thing. Watch out for the defenders there. There's number 87 there. Couldn't cover him. 25-yard run by Trey Justice, who I believe might be the running back. Here you go, Spielman. Passes it down to Trey Justice. And Trey Justice, you see, he's trying to juke out, juke out Kevin Blackman, but it was unsuccessful. It did not work out for him. Defenders obviously playing it smart here. The chicken sandwich, they like to play a certain game. They like to let the running back run it here. And now you see great tackle there, 14 yards. Trey Justice seems like maybe the Wolves have got to realize they've got to start picking up on the fact that Trey Justice is the one doing the most in this game. They're running here once again, tackle there. Frank Wade makes him lose four yards down the field. We are already on the second quarter of this thing. Chicken Sandwich have had possession of this ball in the first quarter. Not been able to execute much throughout the game though. Your Chicken Sandwich seems to be going out long here and it seems like not enough for a first down. Josh Fisher stops him and they're at the third here. Third and 15, Chicken Sandwich have gotta go for a long pass if they want to guarantee a first down near the end zone. Has to get here once again, and they're on the fourth. Chicken Sandwich, this is a dangerous play for them to call here. They got to go for a field goal, honestly. And that's exactly what John Muhammad is here for. Setting up the kick. And it's going to be good. Great 43-yard kick by John Muhammad. And now the Wolves will be receiving this thing with the minute and 12 left. Obviously, you know, the chicken sandwich team had a lot more time to work with during the first half, wasting up all two minutes of it. And then an extra additional minute after that one. After this, of course, the second quarter. Now let's see what Isaiah Brooks can bring to the table. The team we know what he's capable of. Passes it to Bill Solomon. Bill Solomon's going to run this thing. Jukes out the defender. And now Bill Solomon being covered here. A great 57-yard run here by Bill Solomon. And the chicken sandwich might be in the lead, but obviously the Klondike Wolves have the opportunity of getting a touchdown. Here we go. Isaiah Brooks. Think about going long here. Watch out. Great catch there by Bill Solomon. Seven yard completed pass. You can see in the stats there, obviously, you know, Chicken Sandwich have got a lot more to work with. Isaiah Brooks has it down here to Bill Solomon to only gain one yard though. Got a bit overconfident and got tackled by the defender. It's gonna be 32. And they're gonna keep things safe here by ending the first half of this game with a kick. Mario Benson, great 24-yard kick as we tie this thing into halftime. But Wolves 
they know that they will have it to their advantage in the second half because they will be receiving the ball compared to the first half when the chicken sandwich team were the ones that received it. Going for the kick. And now Bill Solomon's going to run this here. Tackles. It's near the 23. 25, actually. Maybe more for a touchback. Ready, break. Here we go, Bill Solomon. Right now, Bill Solomon, you see him there. Seems like they're trying to go for some inside runs throughout the game. It's not really been successful with a defensive team like the Popeyes, not the Popeyes, the Louisiana Chicken Sandwich. Obviously, we can't say Popeyes for copyright reasons. Got a first down there. Great run there, 15 yards. Juked a good amount of defenders in that play. Isaiah Brooks. See what he can execute here. Go for a long pass. Great catch by Derek Bowman. One of the newer wide receivers, of course, of the Klondike Wolves. Showing, you know, getting a little bit more comfortable with wearing the black and blue. And Isaiah Brooks. Gonna run this thing instead. He goes for a first down, and it's going to be a touchdown by Isaiah Brooks. 26 yard run. Great play here. We rarely see Isaiah Brooks get touchdowns and you see the Wolves are going for a two point conversion. That's just how confident they are in this game. And it's going to be successful. Dexter Cox, two points on the scoreboard as the Wolves are on the lead, 11 to three. And the Popeye's chicken sandwich, they gotta be pick they gotta be careful here. They don't wanna be picky with their food. And Gil. Will goes out here near the 20. And as long as Wolves can play great defense, they can keep these guys, can keep these guys back as much as possible. Chicken sandwich, obviously not in the best mindset throughout the game. Think about going along here, he gets sacked once again by Mike Thomas. The Louisiana chicken sandwich team near the 10 yard line. Things are not looking good for them so far. The possible risk of a safety in this game. Let's throw it out on the field. It's going to be a first down there by Bill Brad in the lens. Great catch there. Obviously, if they get a touchdown, they still won't be in the, they won't be in the lead. Here we go. Spielman. Spielman, since he's taking his time, might be going long here. He might be a, yep, it was a catch. 18 yards down the field by Brad in the lens once again. And now we are near the fourth quarter. The Louisiana Chicken Sandwich have an opportunity to at least tie this thing. But Spielman's got to be careful. Doesn't want to go for any bad plays here. And it seems like it was an incomplete pass. Wondike Wolves playing good defense here tonight. Good Spielman. A log here, and it seems like it was another incomplete pass. Chicken sandwich team are getting desperate at this point. They know they don't have a lot of time left. They gotta hurry it up. They're at the third and ten. They want to get a turnover. Oh, and he gets sacked once again, and it seems like Walter Water stopped them. And they're going to go to a fourth. Either setting up for a field goal or going for a risk of a play. And for yeah, they're going for a play. This is very risky for a turnover. Going we'll pass here, and it's going to be a turnover here on part of the Klondike Wolves. Raven Redmond stopped him, and now the Wolves will be in possession of this thing. With a minute and 16 left, Wolves have all the time in the world to make a touchdown. I sit sideways, and you see Dexter Cox running it here. 16 yards down the field for a first down. You see Popeye's chicken, not Popeye's, Jesus Christ. Louisiana's calling for these timeouts. Getting desperate, it seems. Here we go, Brooks. I'm gonna pass it out to Tony Pratt there, the tight end of the Klondike Wolves. Second and inches. Wolves have not called a single timeout. Seems like Chicken Sandwich are doing it for them. With a minute left before the game. Great run there, and it was unsuccessful by Andy Bryant. Made him lose three yards. And of course, Louisiana has no more timeouts. They want to save up the time as much as possible. Third and three here. Passes it down to Bill Solomon. 
He only got it for a fourth down. CJ Big stops him. And now the Wolves, they're either going to set up for a kick. They're going to go for the play. Yeah, they're, they're more confident in going for a play here to get a first down. Even They know that even if they're unsuccessful, and there it is. Bill Solomon wide open down the field for a touchdown. 29-yard run. The Wolves are going to dominate this game. Chicken sandwich, not a single touchdown on the scoreboard. They're going for a two-point conversion and get stopped, though. It does not matter in their eyes, though. Lamare Vance here and do all he wants, but at the end of the day, there's no way that Louisiana Chicken Sandwich are going to win this thing with 27 seconds. It's an early celebration at this point. And now with 20 seconds left on the clock, the least that they could do is get a touchdown before this game ends. But from the distance that they're going and the way they've been playing throughout this game, it seems very unlikely. Going for a long pass. Interception here. Great catch by... I don't know who that guy was, but of course, Jerry Spielman threw an intercepted ball. And the Klondike Wolves got 10 seconds left on the clock to get another touchdown to humiliate Louisiana tonight. And it seems like Isaiah Brooks is going to run this thing. Another fumble and a turnover here. Jacob Sandwich now have the ball. First successful fumble. And that's going to be in the end of the game. They did not have enough time to stop the clock. Klondike Wolves win this thing 17-3. to And coming up next, what seems to be a rivalry game here tonight between the new teams of the Austin Hackers and the Dallas Cataphracts. I believe both of these teams are 1-1 one one currently in the rankings. And of course, with both of these teams being in Texas, it's going to be interesting to see how well this is going to fare. We're going to see who's literally going to be the, the best team in Texas here tonight. Here we go. Let's see what the Austin Hackers can do here tonight. This is more of a classic A&M versus another Texas Tech rivalry. But in the DFL this time, though. Lester Owens, quarterback of the Austin Eagles, runs it here on the field. And it's going to be a first down tackle, that defender. And it seems like the Dallas Cataphracts not, you know, not being able to recuperate here. In the early going of this game it doesn't seem like they're at 100%. Here we go. Lester Owens thinking about going long here. Watch out. Great catch there by Williams. And Williams going to set up for a touchdown, but not quite 40 yard catch. This is dangerous turf for the Dallas Cataphracts. They gotta be careful. They're near the five yard line. Going for an inside run, successful one at that Darren Randall four yard run. Great play there. It left, seems like they go for a two point conversion. Successful at that. Great play by Darren Randall. Two points on the scoreboard. This thing is now 8-0. Dallas Cataphracts. Gotta focus. Now that the ball's on them, they can finally get some play time. Seems like he's running side with Juke. Those guys out. Great move there. Got near the 25 for a touchback. I think, you know, being near 22 is not that bad compared to if it would have been around the 15 back there. Didn't juke those guys out. Going for an inside run in here. And you see Derek Coleman is just running this thing out far. 40, 52 yards down the field. Great move here by Dustin Coleman. And the Dallas Cataphracts wasting little to no time. They want to prove that Dallas is, is better than Austin. Here we go. Derek Coleman once again juked that guy out. But it seems like at a desperation... And just looking away for a split second, he got tackled. Real Lewis. Quarterback. Passes it down to Richardson, the tight end. 11 yard catch. We're at the second quarter now. Disaster. Ready, break. Down. Real Lewis. Going for it, going for down the middle of the field. Incomplete pass. In this case, he dropped it. Or 
There we go. Lewis has it on the field and it seems like it was near the one yard line. That's exactly what it's going to be. Cataphracts, they could go for an inside run and get a touchdown here to at least tie it before halftime. Running it down the field. Oh my goodness gracious, seems like almost like magic. Jameis Hester, I didn't even see him pass, it to pass the ball to him. It's just how quick it was. And Dallas Cataphracts are going to risk it and go for the two point. Watch out here, go for an inside run and it was a false play, unsuccessful, Jermaine Fisher stopped him. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to go for an inside run. Hope They were hoping to tie this thing before halftime. It seems like it's not gonna happen. Johnson's gonna run it here, immediately gets tackled at the 20. Austin Hackers playing great, great football tonight. We go running it here and Lester Owens is gone here 30 yards on the field Lester Owens is not waiting for anybody to pass it to he's gonna take things into his own hands Here we go that's it here and Shelton shit Shelton shit over here 16 yard catches the Austin hackers call for a timeout Cataphracts got to be careful here. Keep him to wear it down as much as possible. With our pass here, seems like it was a successful catch as they go for a timeout. Is there anything these guys cannot do? Going for a long pass here, and it seems like it's going to be near the two or three yard line. 20 yard catch by Calvin Cooper, very successful. And now, at the four, Dallas Cataphracts in trouble. The defenders nowhere in sight as Darren Randall gets the touchdown. And now setting up for the extra point. They're gonna go for a kick on this one. Try to block him in time, but it was gonna be unsuccessful and the kick is good. Get a touchdown. Oh no, of course not a touchdown. I'm gonna kick off. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. Here we go, and now Dallas Cataphracts. Obviously a team you don't want to sleep on, but it seems like in here they've been struggling throughout the beginning of the season. Chris Ferguson, 18 yard catch. Nice run here, and it might be a first down. There we go. Is it down to Whitfield? And Whitfield's gonna run this thing for a first down once again with one second left on the clock here. Very lucky that he didn't take this thing to halftime. He's gonna set up. Or the kick. Is he going to be successful and it's not? Kel Kelvin Willis stops him and blocks it. And we go into halftime. Dallas Cataphracts, they've got a mountain to climb here if they want to defeat the Austin Hackers in their home stadium. And it's, it's Cataphracts that are going to be receiving the ball for the second half. This is where they don't want to waste any time. Get back on him. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. They're running it here. Now Lewis. Lewis has gone and out of here. 20, 30, 40, 45 yard run here by Bobby Lewis. This is the type of plays that they need to be doing here Ready, in this matchup. Break. Dallas Cataphracts, they gotta go for these risky plays. What gets them points on the scoreboard? Chris Ferguson gets tackled out on the field. It's 
stop them. And now Hester. Jay Hester, fullback into a touchdown. You saw that guy dive, was unsuccessful. 22 yard run here for the Dallas Cataphracts. And they're setting up for a kick once again. They did not learn their lesson the first time, but they get it down the middle here. Cataphracts 13. Obviously, Austin Hackers have a successful two point conversion under their belt, which is the reason why they're winning this thing. It's going to be a touchback here for, for the Austin Hackers. Cataphracts still have a chance to win this thing. Austin Hackers have definitely played very well in, in the going of this, of this game. Pass it here. That's tackled near the 10. Not near the 10. They got near the first down. Ready, break. Down. Lester oh. Owens showing that He's got, he's got that dog in him. Running the first down here and gets tackled by the defender from behind. Does not matter because he got 24 yards in the field. Ready, break. Ready. Lester Owens passes it down. Only got five yards in from the inside run. And now we are going into the fourth quarter of this game. Anything can happen up to this point. The Austin Hackers, Lester Owens running this thing once again. No defenders in sight, but that guy got in his way. And it literally made, made him stop halfway through the run. Literally, if he didn't get in the way, Austin Hackers would have gotten a touchdown there. It did not happen. And now he's setting up once again. Defenders nowhere in sight. And he covered him there. Lester Owens, three yard run for a touchdown. And Austin Hackers are gonna take this thing home with the victory. Nothing much that Cataphracts can do up to this point. Right down the middle, the kick is going to be good. Now Cataphracts will be receiving the ball here. Near the 25, because this thing's gonna be a touchback. Bobby Lewis. One thing about going along here. Great one handed catch by Chris Ferguson. Into a first down, and you see them calling for a timeout. Ready, break. Ready. We got Lewis. And on the field interception here by the Austin Hackers. Cataphracts, they thought that, you know, they've been having a bad night here. And Austin Hackers are going to celebrate this thing with that intercepted play. Now it's just light work at this point. Lester Owens running it here. No defenders in sight except there for the 22. Cataphracts calling for a timeout. They wanted to save up as much time as possible despite the fact that they are the ones playing on defense. Head coach should focus more on their defense with the play. You see him wide open. And then, of course, Troy Nash, not Troy Nash, but Sean Johnson, 20-yard run. Another touchdown for the Austin Hackers. And he's setting up for the kick to make this thing 13 to 29. The kick is good. Honestly, if you're Dallas Cataphracts, how do you got to be feeling here? 44 seconds left on the clock. Obviously, you're not going to win this thing. But that intercepted pass was what killed the momentum going to the fourth quarter. Ready, break. Bobby Lewis. Hut, hut. Pass here. Got to be careful not to get sacked. Great catch there by Dustin Coleman. The cataphracts are calling for the timeout. 30 Ready, seconds break. left. Here you go, Lewis. As he did the field and immediately gets tackled. Nine yards. Bo Alexander deflects it. 22 seconds. Seems like there's not much time left in Lewis has it here sideways. Sean Whitfield only got five yards in. 
enough for first down, it may seem. So now first to ten. Two seconds is gonna be the last play of the game before we call before, before we call the bell here. And immediately gets tackled, not enough. Data cataphracts having a rough game tonight. At the end of the day, Austin Hackers pick up the victory here as they are now two and one for the season. 29 to 13 on the final score. And coming up next, we got the Super Bowl champions that will be taking this thing here as they take on the team of the Atlanta Booteous. Greenville Growl, obviously, you know, Super Bowl champions like I literally just mentioned, but it seems like they're pretty same in terms of the overall here with the Atlanta Booteous. This should be an interesting game. Obviously, the Atlanta team has been, you know, one of the more newer prospects. It's interesting to see what they can, what they can do here against the champs. We're going to start this game with Greenville Growl receiving the ball in their home stadium, which was the same home stadium they played on to win the Super Bowl. He gets tackled immediately, though. Atlanta Budias is just one of those teams where you don't really pay much attention to them, but they've obviously been making, making the rounds here throughout the first two weeks of the season. Now Clyde Ellis throws it down the field. Incomplete pass. Playing great defense here on part of the Atlanta, uh, part of the away team. Greenville Growl. Clyde Ellis pass it down in the middle of the field. Here we go Copeland. Marquise Copeland running back. Brilliant play here. We know we know what Marquise Copeland is capable of. Great 62-yard run. It seems already with the minute and 17 that they might get a touchdown. <laughs> Down the middle, and the kick is going to be good. You saw one of the defenders took out another one of their guys. Bit of miscommunication there. And Growler are going to go for the extra point. Good point conversions. Got to be careful not to get sacked here. He's taking up his time. Think about going long here. And immediately gets tackled, though. Adam Blake stops him. He pulled out that one game with the Atlanta Falcons where they took like a good 30 seconds just to run it. Willie Walls, great kick here. And Rob Bender, the running back of Atlanta Budius. Stop him there into a 25. 24, actually. Go Joe Cotton, passes it to Rob Bender. Once again, the defenders nowhere in sight until up to this point. 34, 35 yard run by Rob Bender. An interesting take here, not, not one play yet. Only the first play here, you see how, how well they were able to execute it compared to Greenville Growl. They, as long as they notice that weak spot in the defenders, they definitely have a possibility of beating them here tonight. Rob Bender going for an inside run. It's immediately tackled by all those guys over there. Growl with that wasted two point conversion. Might cost them this game, honestly, later on. I see here Rob Bender, Rob Bender just jukes that guy out. Just juke two defenders of the Growl team. Four of 26 yard run. Impressive stuff here on part of the Atlanta Booteous. And this time they're going to play it safe and they're going to go for the kick so they can take the lead. And it's going to be good. And because Growl got overconfident and they tried to go for a two point conversion earlier, now they're the ones losing. Kicks it down the field. Marquise Copeland going to receive it. Dukes him out. Of course, one of them got in the way and he could not, could not execute it in time. Ready, break. Down. Set. Hut, hut. A great run here. Marquise Copeland. And once again, Marquise Copeland juking out the defenders over there. Got 45 yards down the field. As long as they let Marquise Copeland do his thing, they got a chance of winning this. But Atlanta Booty is putting up a hell of a fight in this. With Clyde Ellis. Think about going long here. You gotta be careful not to get sacked. Just shoulder tackled that guy. John Irvin, 25-yard catch. Growler calling for a timeout. 
with the minute and 13 left. I want to get back in the. We want to get back in this. Inside run, successful one at that. Marquise Copeland with the touchdown. 113 yards in total from this game. And once again, they're going for a two-point conversion. And this time, it was successful as they recover the one that they missed from last play. Not the last play, but the last touchdown. And now this thing's going to be 7-14. to 14. Atlanta Booty has got a chance to tie this before halftime. That way, they will be the ones receiving the ball in the second half of the game. Ready, break. Here you go, this, this MF named Joe Cotton. Who names their child Joe Cotton? And Rob Bender, on the other hand, 40-50. The defenders only show up when, it's, when the time is crucial and not earlier on when they were having less yards out on the field. How does this make any sense? Here you go, Joe Cotton. Down the field, CJ Mitchell gets tackled. Second and short. Nice pass out on the field, but it was incomplete. Avery Miller deflected the ball there. And they're setting up for the kick. Oh, and it was unsuccessful. Krause stopped him in time. Eric Rowan made sure not that, that didn't happen there. And they're going to go to halftime now. Does Atlanta Booty still have a second chance when they receive the ball in the second in the third quarter. Here we go. Great play there. Rob Bender running it here. Oops, that guy out. Here we go. Joe Cotton, one of my favorite guys to announce out here. Love his name. Nothing controversial with his name if he's not black. Now Joe Cotton once again has it here to Michael Lindsay going for the run here. And now going for the 10, the 20, the 30, 36 yard run here by Michael Lindsay. Great play there. Pass it down and immediately caught it. And he got tackled by Chucky Crane. That thing might have counted. Ready, break. Mike, one, two. Mike, one, two. Hut, hut. And Joe Cotton once again. They got to get a touchdown already. Going for the long pass here. Gets tackled by Dan Dickey. No, Dan Dickey's the one that caught it, actually. Ready, break. We go. Thinking about going long here. He's got a guy wide open, but gets deflected there by Alex O'Sullivan. Made sure he stopped him and did not get the touchdown. Ready, gotta be careful with these guys that are wide open on the field. That's it running here and gets tackled. Alan Brandon makes him lose four yards. Disastrous for the Atlanta Booteous right now. They got to tie this thing before the fourth quarter. But Joe Cotton seems like he's taking matters into his own hands. And he got close enough near the end zone. And now they're at the fourth Atlanta Booteous. They got a chance to tie this game. But what do they do instead? They're going for a kick. And once again, they get stopped. Have they, have they not learned their lesson from the first time? Jermaine Harris just stopped them there. And that play was completely useless. As now the Greenville Growler back on possession. And immediately you see Marquise Copeland just very effortlessly juking these guys out. 53 yards. Marquise Copeland and the Greenville Growl 
just kind of playing with their food here tonight. Obviously, Atlanta Booty has gave a strong showing, but at the end of the day, you're playing the Super Bowl champions. Going for the inside run. Very successful one at that. Marquise Copeland with another touchdown in about less than three plays. Setting up for the extra point. They gave them enough time to at least try to get a touchdown. But it's not going to be enough. Going for the two-point conversion. Successful. KC Wheeler puts two additional points for the Greenville Growlers. This thing is 22 to 7. Jesus Christ. Atlanta Booty is not looking good tonight. Got to be careful. At this point, they might as well just start warming up the, the tour bus right now to go back to the next stadium for next week. Here we go. Joe Cotton passes it down here. Goes for a first down now. 37 yards. And they call for a timeout. You don't have a lot of time to waste here. Cotton. Am I going long? In incomplete pass. Deflected by Joe Armstrong. Ready, fight. Five, four, two. Five, four, two. Cotton. For the pass here. Oh, and immediately he catches it though. Great play. The ball fumbled in midair, but Rob Bender still managed to catch it. 44 yards down the field. Great play. Maybe pure luck, honestly. But they're not going to win this thing, but at least they're getting a final touchdown. And this time the kick is good, and it's not blocked. And Greenville Grau with 29 seconds on the clock. It'd be hilarious if they got a touchdown in this amount of time. But knowing, knowing Marquise Copeland, that could definitely be the case. You gotta be careful not to get injured. Hey, hey yo, what are those guys doing? Ready, break. Ready. 234 total yards today for Greenville. Marquise Copeland running right down the middle. Like I mentioned previously, Marquise Copeland is just a tank on the field. 60, 76 yards for the first down in the one yard line. Incredible with two seconds left. And they're going to play it safe here with the kick. And there it is. The kick is good. Willie Walls gets a win. Of course, they would have won this thing regardless of the kick. But the Greenville Grout pick up a victory against the Atlanta Booteous 26, 25 to 14. And coming up next, we have two teams that are quite different, quite honestly could be, you know, comparable to one another, but they are completely polar opposites. The Washington Asswipes taking on the Detroit Darkies for the first time ever here in this matchup. This might be considered a rivalry game for the B Conference, but let's see how well the Asswipes can win here tonight against the Darkies. The Darkies looking to get their first ever win as well with the Economist. And now we are in, Jesus Christ. Honestly, this is, you know, the Asswipe Stadium. But, you know, the Adarkies fit in here as well. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be serious here. Both teams are quite comparable. There we go, great run there, and of course gets tackled. Go. Nice run here by Edwards and Edwards 30 40 53 yard run here by the Washington ass wipes The Troy darkies are in shambles right now Pass it down to Edwards once again defenders nowhere in sight and the ass wipes get a touchdown for the team Seems like they're going for a two-point conversion. Unsuccessful. They were very close to getting it, though. But the ball was deflected. Oh, 
And they go for the kickoff. Robinson will be receiving this thing in behalf of the darkies. Oops, and there gets near the 20. Oh my goodness. Oh my dang. Oh my goodness, they're going ham. The Fred Rhodes, star quarterback. The Darkies passes it out here, and that's exactly why he is their star quarterback. Great pass by the top to Boss Thompson. Ready, we go pass it in the field, gets a first down. it here and now Solomon running this thing 20 30 wide open for the touchdown great play there and as long as darkies can you know get a successful field goal they'll take the lead in this and that's exactly what they're doing they're not gonna go for a two-point conversion because they know it's risky right down the middle they know a field goal will get them a better chance of getting in the lead they're not really hurrying this up here you know they got all the time in the world. They got an entire second half. Still make some very big plays. And now Lawf, Lawf, War, Warfield, whatever this guy's name is. Twenty, you're the twenty-one. You see those stats? You can't see them. The right Stevens passes it to Joe Harris. It seems or second at inches. Second in inches in your mom. Here we go. Great pass. More like a three yard loss. Ready, We're going for a run here. Now Edwards, once again, gone and out. He's got to be careful for them. Here we go. Stevens. Running this thing was unsuccessful. happened there <laughs> what, what happened there he kind of juke this guy out it was unsuccessful kind of just did a little spin and then just called it a day well, great pass there only nine yards down the middle for an inside run and it was good at that and they could not catch up to him Joe Paris gets a touchdown for the Washington ass wipes they go for a two-point conversion wide open that guy was it's gonna be an extra point for Joe Paris once again Of course, not looking good here tonight. Detroit Darkies, they gotta get a touchdown at least to tie this thing before halftime. Pressure's on them. Here we go. Solomon, with the tackle done right before, right before the first down. Ready, break. Fred Rhodes going out long here, and it seems like Fred Rhodes, he likes playing these long passes. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
It seems like it's already gonna be halftime. Jesus Christ. These games go by quick. What can I say? And pass it here to Robinson. And Robinson's gonna run this thing to the 20. And I get a holla holla for my dollar dollar. Ready, break. One, two. Break, one, two. And not block people. Over long pass. Once again, great catch there by Boss Thompson. Fred Rhodes, long pass once again, Robinson. And Robinson run this thing to a 35. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Set. Hut, hut. Here we go, pass it here, and he jukes that guy out, not once, but twice. And Michael Solomon, great touchdown. And now they can land the field goal. They will tie this game on the third quarter. And they do. It's 14 to 14. Both teams pretty equal right now in terms of the standings. And it's going to be another kickoff. And Darkies have got to play strong defense right now. Nelson doing nothing. Ryan Stevens passes it to Rogers. 26 yard catch. No timeouts called then just yet. They don't need to with the third quarter. This thing might end, a, end in a tie. Let's be honest here. One for an inside run. Only six yards. And now we're at the fourth quarter. Anything can happen up to this point with two minutes left. Washington ass wipes have possession of the ball. But Ryan Stevens passes it once again, and it's going to be an incomplete deflected pass from Troy Nash. Make sure that did not happen. We are now third and fourth. They got to be careful not to have a, have a fourth down here. Pass it down the middle, and it's going to be another tackle here from Pete Robinson. Made him lose three yards, and now the ass wipes. We're on the fourth down. They could either go for a long field goal or they're going to go for a play and risk it. Risk a possible turnover. Gotta be careful not to get sacked. And for the catch, and it seems like it's not enough for the first down. He got tackled right, by, right before the yellow line. And it's going to be a turnover for the Detroit Darkies. And Darkies now back in the fight. Have a chance to win the first game here of the season. Going for the long pass, and you see... Boss Thompson, great 26-yard catch. And the Darkies with the timeouts to their advantage. As long as they can run this clock, as long as they can keep little time, as little enough time for the ass swipes in their play, it's going to be good. And that's going to be a touchdown. Michael Solomon once again, two touchdowns throughout the duration of this thing. And Darkies take the lead before the end of this matchup. They're setting up for the extra point. And the kick is going to be good. Darkies 21, ass swipes 14. And with both of these teams so equal, it's hard to tell what could happen at this point of the game. The only way ass swipes can win this thing is by getting a touchdown and a two point conversion, a win by one. Ready, and who knows at this point? Stevens. He might go along here. Passes it. Incomplete pass. The Darkies defense playing well here tonight. Darkies got a bit of a pep in their step ahead of this game. Maybe because everything around here is the same color as them. Ryan Stevens. 
Going for the long pass. Once again, gets tackled out 25 yards, 27. And the Aspipes call a timeout. 38 seconds on the clock. Something's got to give. They're halfway down the field. Aswipes have a chance to win the game. They go past it here. And then gets tackled right near, but not close for second and short. Call for another timeout. They have one more timeout left to do in this game. With 30 seconds left. Aswipes. And for a pass here, and it's going to be a first down. And they call for a timeout once again. They have no more timeouts for this, so they got to hurry it up. Ask Swipes, they got to use this 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 precious time to their advantage. And for the pass here, and it's going to be tackled once again for first down, though. And Ask Swipes, they got to hurry it up. They got 10 seconds left. At the 20-yard line. Could this be the game winning the game winning touchdown? Oh, and it's absolutely not. They got four seconds left. 15 yard line. Two seconds left on the clock. Last play of the game. Can the ass swipes defeat the darkies? They run it. Wide open, and it's gotta be a touchdown. Darren Rogers, great 15 yard catch. Now the question is: are they gonna set up for a two-point conversion? That's what they're doing. They're risking it. They're going for the play. If they get it here, they win the game. Being careful here, and it's, whoa, incomplete pass. Ryan Stevens threw an incomplete pass, and the Darkies lucked out of that one. They pick up a win tonight, 21 to 20. This was a close game, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you that. But at the end of the day, it was one failed throw from Ryan Stevens. One miscalculation. They got desperate at the second, at the last seconds of the game with the two point conversion. It costed them the win against the Detroit Darkies. And coming up next, we got a slobber knocker of an absolute Group A matchup as the Danish Lego men are set to take on the Chicago Washington. Let's see how well these two teams will fare against each other tonight. Welcome to another Sunday Rivals matchup. As the Danish Lego men seems like Chicago Washington are playing in Denmark tonight. It's bright and sunny here for this game. Which is cannot be the same cannot be spoken the same for people that live in Chicago. Here we go. There it goes Sullivan, pass it down to McGrady, and McGrady running this great 41-yard catch. Lego men are definitely a dominant team, as they are 2-0, they're looking to go 3-0 after tonight. Maybe being the first team to go 3-0. And Lego men, pass it here. And Sam Little, the tight end, great 18-yard great catch. Seems like almost like the, the, the tables have turned, so to speak, because Was Chicago, Washington were the ones that had an undefeated streak during the second season. And now this one, it seems like Lego men are the one that have it. But I don't want to speak way too early and possibly jinx anything. Here we go. O'Sullivan runs it here. The quarterback, nobody in sight. And it's going to be a touchdown, though. 19 yard run for the Lego men as they pick up a touchdown. And now they got an extra point to use. And they're gonna do it by going for a two point conversion. Okay, Derek O'Sullivan passing it out of the field and it's going to be an incomplete deflected pass. Same situation we saw with the ass wipes just a couple of minutes ago. And it's going to be a touchback disaster. Ready, right. one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. We go Jason Turner with the Chicago Washington thinking about going long here. Incomplete pass. Not doing so great right now. Here we go. Jay Hester running right down the middle for the inside run. Not for a first down, though. It's third and one. 
Washington might risk, they might have a chance of, you know, getting a fourth down, which is what they don't want. Jason Turner is going to go long here. Great pass to Kawain Middleton for 27 yard catch. But that's the type of thing, though. You don't want to have too many defenders around your wide receiver. So you always got to have some guy, you know, covering him, but can't always do that all the time. But Jason Turner thinking he's taking his time there. It means he's going long. He goes for a 31 pass. Dexter Payton gets near the end zone. The Chicago Danish, six yards in. Washington have a chance to score a touchdown. Goes for the inside run, but there was a defender that blocked him. Only got two yards in. With a minute and 17 left before halftime. Well, passes it to Jay Hester. Jay Hester knew that nobody was wide open over there. And he went for the opportunity and got the touchdown. He's setting up for the kick. If he can land it successfully, he will take the lead. And they do. The kick is good. Washington now winning this game 7-6. The Danish Lego men can definitely get a touchdown before, this, before halftime. Jennings running it here. Seems like everybody got piled up for a second there. What you don't want to do. Go oh, Sullivan. Everybody going long here. Great catch by Sam Little. And they call for a timeout before this game can end. Running here, and you see Miles just running 34 yards in. Great play, great fake out. Ready, here we go. We're solid. Has it to Miles. And Miles just wide open there. He only got near the one. But it's close enough to get a touchdown right before halftime with 28 seconds left an interesting take here Danish Legoman if they can get an inside run hopefully yep there it is inside run Greg Miles puts a touchdown for the team Danish Legoman definitely have become the Miami Dolphins of the DFL right now they go for the extra point and the ball was deflected Derek O'Sullivan could not throw the two-pointer as we now get near halftime with 25 seconds left. And Washington will be receiving it for this game. We'll take a break from the game here. Immediately gets tackled with 17 seconds left. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Set. Hut, hut. Turner passes to Jay Hester, eight seconds left. Four first down. And I believe this will be the end of the, this will be the last play of the game before halftime. With Lego men taking the lead before these guys head to the locker room. Pass it here, it's tackled and that's gonna be it. They call for a timeout, but what's the point? They couldn't call the timeout in time and the, of course the Danish Lego men will take the lead, it's 12 to seven. Washington, they got a stern talking to backstage by Wallet during the halftime. Now let's see what these what these guys can do. Jackson running it here. Gets near the 25. Washington's gotta be careful. They gotta bring that that killer instinct in them. They gotta bring in that same passion that made them go undefeated during the second season of the DFL. Because these guys are just a shell of their former selves. Great catch there by Jackson, and Jackson's gonna run this out 37. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Set. Hut, hut. 
but Jason Turner once again. Going long here, and it's going to be a touchdown. Great 25-yard catch. That guy was completely uncovered. And Washington are going to take this lead now. Going for the extra point. Can they get the two-point conversion? Unsuccessful. Stopped. I cannot believe what I'm witnessing right now. Even with the failed two-point conversion, Wallet still takes the lead here. Washington, I mean, Wallet's obviously not playing. Here we go Jennings. Running it near the 25. 24, actually. At the 26. Go pass it to Miles. Miles now running it for a go for an inside run. And now the 30, the 40, the 50. Nothing's gonna stop these guys. Other than that guy right there. But still, great 72 yard run. Here we go, O'Sullivan. Try to go for a two point conversion. Was unsuccessful. Leland Sanders stopped him. Danish Lego man not, not really being too careful with these. Oh, it was not a two-point conversion. That's my mistake. I got five seconds left. They can definitely get a touchdown, though. And that guy got juke. And it's going to be a touchdown by LeBron. LeBron James Simpson. From hit television show The Simpsons. Okay, they're not going for an extra point. They're just going to go for the kick. That's almost stopped for a second, but they still get it down the middle. It's going to be good. And now we are at the fourth quarter. Washington, Chicago, Washington have two minutes to get back in this thing, which is plenty of time. It's Jackson, kind of just thinking about it there. You saw he kind of hesitated at a split second. You didn't really know what to do with, the, with that run there. And Jason Turner, he's got to throw a Hail Mary if he wants to win this thing. Thinking about it, going for the pass. Great first down. They get near the 40 yard line. 44 though. We got Turner. We got in mind here, what play is he gonna go for? Right down the middle once again, pass it to Quayne Middleton. Give me second and inches. This time the Washington team's call for the timeout. Here we go, Lego men in trouble. They gotta play strong defense. Once again, down the middle, wide open, and the Chicago Washington's Edwin Jackson, 33 yard catch to a touchdown. And the Washington team are taking the lead with a minute and six left. And they go for the two point conversion because this thing's tied. Oh, once again, it's an epic fail. Jason Turner could not do it. I don't know what is happening with Jason Turner. He's doing so well with some of these plays. And then when it comes to the two-point conversion, it's not working. And now the Lego men. Of course, both of these teams are tied in this game. Definitely a possibility that this thing might go to overtime if they don't get a touchdown in one minute. It'd be interesting to see what would occur. Here we go. O'Sullivan throws it down to the middle of the field and it's going to be a 22-yard catch. Lego man calling for a timeout. They know the, the precious time that they have here. They want, they need to go 3-0 in this matchup. Almost like a passing of the torch here. Great catch though. And McGrady just running it here. 30, 40, 52 yards on the field. I cannot believe what I'm witnessing here, folks. 31 seconds left. Washington need to play some strong defense if they want to at least get to overtime. But Lego men seems like they go for the pass here. Great catch to a touchdown. McGrady saves it for the Lego men, and they're gonna go 3-0 for the season so far. Just like the Philadelphia Eagles. Going for the kick. Right down the middle, it's gonna be good. Very close matchup between these two teams. I'm not even gonna lie to you. But now Washington, they gotta pull a miracle in 18 seconds, 17, 14, 13, and there it is. Seems like they did not call for a timeout. 
13 seconds, but obviously they don't need a timeout. This was a kickoff. They might have two more plays left here. And Jason Turner's got to make some long passes if he wants to see any success. Great pass there. They got a call for a timeout here. John Clausen, 27-yard catch. Three seconds left on the clock. It's going to be the last play of the game. And Danish Lego men are going to come, go home with a victory. We're going to celebrate from home. We got Turner going for the long pass, and he runs it out here. Oh, it's not enough for a touchdown. Kowain Middleton got it out 41 yards, but at the end of the day, the Danish Lego men continue their undefeated streak by defeating the Chicago, a team that used to have an undefeated streak, the Chicago Washington 26-19. And coming up next, we have, uh, of course, two coaches that do not like each other as we have Dutch Crusader from managing the Bainbridge Ball Lickers taking on, of course, Curry is managing the Netherlands Stone to Stolpos. Both teams pretty equal tonight, and they will be taking each other on here in the third week of the DFL. Let's see how this game is going to go. Love me some Monday Night Football. Why is it completely foggy here in Detroit? How did these people of Detroit have enough money to afford to get in this football game? They must have paid them for free. Must have paid them to sit there. Ready, break. But I'm not one to judge now. Here we go. Wallace. Pass it to Parker. Parker's going to juke those guys out. And he's going long here. 30, 40, 46 yard run. Great play there by Jerry Parker. Wall Lickers obviously using the fog or whatever goddamn carbon emissions are in the air right now. To suffocate the Netherlands stone to Stolfos. And it's a great strategy, in my honest opinion. That's what they were going for. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Can't even see where the end zone is. So pass it to Redmond. Redmond tried to go for an inside run. It did not work out so well. God bless America. And not the Netherlands. Wallace passes it to Parker and just wide open for the touchdown for the Bainbridge Ball Lickers. As they now set up for an extra point. And the kick is what they're going to do. Wide into the middle and the kick is going to be good. And now let's see what the Astolfos can do in this. Kicks it. Going to be a touchdown. RJ Logan not doing nothing. Kind of just stood there. Let's see what Ryan McGrady can do. Against they see Van Dyke. Corey Wooden. Made him lose two yards there. McGrady. About going long here. Nope, it seems like passes to McCaffrey. McAfee. Mac McAfee. That, that software that you download on your computer. Ready, break. Down. Shut him down. Grady running it here and he gets sacked by Lamar Doe. More like John Doe, his twin brother. Ready, break. And they're on the fourth now, and I didn't even notice this. They had fourth and 17 here. And they're going to punt it instead. And here we go. Nice tackle there. Ran right into them. Let's be completely honest. He could have ran the edge of the field, and it would have been good. But he just had to show off and run into those guys. Here we go. Wallace, pass it to Parker. Parker's going to run this thing. That guy was sitting down and still the ball lickers. I don't know how they got tackled there. Could have just juked them there. Score is still 0-0 zero zero in the second quarter. Actually, never mind. It's 7-0. Running inside run here. Unsuccessful. Gary Parker, great play there. The ball looked call timeout. Stoffel is not really being able to do much throughout the course of this game. Ball lookers seem to be, every time I look over here, it seems like ball lookers are the ones that always have the, the ball. I call for another timeout. You see, Stoffel's they've lost two passing yards. How is this possible? Ready, break. Down. Set. 
We got ball lookers. Wallace running it here and immediately gets clocked in here by Robert Radetzky. Made them lose five yards. Ready, break. Razor, razor. They got to move those chains. 55 seconds. And now Parker running it here once again. It's going to be a touchdown. 41 yard run. Ball lickers dominating the Astolfos. Their head coach being very proud right now considering their history with the Astolfos head coach. Kick right down the middle. It's going to be good. And the ball lickers could possibly head a halftime with 14 to 0. Seems like the skies have cleared up a bit now. RJ Logan. See what he can do on the field. Not very much, apparently. Ready, break. Yeah. Set. Ryan Go. McGrady passes it to Derek Cobb. Gets the first yard, first down, though. They call for a timeout since they only have 29 Ready, seconds break. left before halftime. Something's got to give. Has it to RJ Logan, and RJ Logan gets tackled by Mr. AC Van Dyke. Four yard loss. It's dangerous for the Astolfos. They've not been able to get much first downs throughout the course of this. They've been losing yards throughout the game here. And for a tackle, he's got a first down now. 31 yards into the field by Isaac Allen. The Astolfos, Kyle, call for a timeout once again. No more timeouts left by either team, actually, with 10 seconds left. This might be the final play. McGrady, got to play it long here, and he gets sacked by Lamar Doe, and they got to hurry this up, though, before the clock runs out. With two seconds left, going to be the last play before halftime. Here we go, McGrady, looking to get a touchdown before this game. Well, this game runs its course, and it's going to be an incomplete pass from the Bainbridge Ball Lickers. And that's how we head to halftime, folks. With the Ball Lickers at 14, and the Astolfos, not a single touchdown. But they have a chance to recuperate here when they receive the ball in the second half. Immediately a touchback means that they will automatically be placed on the 25. Ryan McGrady's got to pull something out of his trick, his trick book here. Out of his playbook, whatever the saying goes. Great catch by Martin Christman. Martin Christmas. Named after an actual holiday. Well, McGrady. For the pass here, great first first down there by the Netherlands Stone Stolfos. Despite Darren Cole's deflecting it. Did they count it? Apparently they did not count it. He did not catch it for a first down. That is interesting. He's a second of ten. Passes down the field and he gets tackled. Might have been a first down. I don't think it was. The, the refs have not called this thing as a first down. Instead it'll be third and ten. The Stolfos are in trouble here. Great catch. It was that first down? It was first down, just barely by Dontrell Cobb. They got to hurry it up here with third quarter left in the game. A minute and four. And the pass. The catch there and immediately gets planted. Hunter Clay deflecting it there. Hunter Clay is... Killing it on the field here, despite him being this is only the first time really that he's done anything in these games. Second and ten, McGrady. Thinking about going long here. Great catch into another first down. Bernie Lumen, actually. We got 36, 35 left on this clock before fourth quarter. Astolfos, they want to at least get a touchdown before the end of this game so they don't feel humiliated. Just like the Barnacles in that one game where they didn't score a single touchdown. Ready, break. Ready. Here we go, McGrady. They pass it here. And on Cobb, and this time the Astolfos get a touchdown. 
21 yard catch. It only took them three quarters to do so. Kind of sad when you think about it. But they definitely did. Oh, and it. I was going to say they need another one, but Chris Wayne stops them. Making sure they do not get that kick. The only way for Astolfos to recover here is if there is a turnover or an interception or a fumble. And then they get a touchdown with the two point conversion to at least tie this thing. He ran right into that guy, though, let's be fair. He's wide open, wide open field. There's nowhere for him to go. Now let's see what the ball lickers are made of here. We already know what they're capable of. Juked that guy out and he's gone. Parker running this thing 38 yards. 164 in total. He's already had two touchdowns throughout the duration of this game. Them being all of them. Wallace passing it down to Parker. Another inside run, but second and short. And the Astolfo is calling for a timeout. They want to save as much time as possible for when they receive it. The ball lickers, they don't want that to happen. Goes Chris Redmond. Redmond, the fullback, once again, another touchdown for the Bay Bridge ball lickers. 31 yard run. And at this point, the Astolfos are just going to cry themselves home after the night. Right down the middle, the kick is going to be good. Ball Lickers going to celebrate here tonight in front of the people, in front of their home crowd. The Astolfos are going back to the Netherlands. Or at least wait until their next game. Let's tackle once again. Honestly, with a minute left, there's nothing much you can do. Ready, break. I forgot to mention that on um, famous commentary, Ryan Brookheiser. Correct right, passes here. Only 26 yards. Still close call for another timeout. Is there anything these guys can't do other than win? Unless you're the cool kids clearing red names. Oh, intercepted though. Baybridge ball lickers. Looking to humiliate him here. And Ra Randall McGrady threw an intercepted ball. Oh my Jesus. Ball lickers near the 41 yard line. And they got a chance to score another touchdown. Inside run here. And Jerry Parker is gone and out. 40, 50, 55 yard run just like that one. The play right after the interception was a touchdown. So effortlessly was that from the ball lickers. They are gonna dominate the Astolfos today. Going for another inside run. This time it was unsuccessful, but it does not matter. Because they pick up a victory here tonight. Jesus. Now Astolfos with 25 seconds left on the clock. They might not have won this thing, but that at least they got a touchdown. They can home, they can go home with, that, with saying that at least. And not feel humiliated. That didn't score anything. I got 17 seconds. Going for a long pass. Think about it. Intercepted once again. Oh my lord. What is Randall McGrady on tonight? Jesus. Seven seconds left. Ball lickers looking to go. For, oh my god. They're going for the kick. 35 yard kick. Is it going to be good? And it is. Great play there by Brendan Easley as they dominated. The goddamn Netherlands stone to Stolfos. 30 to 6. That is an absolute victory here tonight for the home team. And coming up next, we got a classic game that dates back to the very first season of the DFL Roots. It is the Lexington Minutemen battling the Florida Femboys. We obviously know that both coaches seem to argue with each other a lot in terms of drafting but let's see how well they can fare with the teams tonight when the femboys look to go 3-0 against the super bowl champions of the first season of the lexington minutemen oh my goodness gracious what happened to the atmosphere again minutemen playing here tonight on home stadium obviously they cannot clean up after themselves I'm near the 20 jesus christ Femlex. 
Look at those early stats. Here we go. Pass it to Rod Washington. Rod Washington gets tackled out on the field, though. Joe Blair makes him lose four yards. You got to be careful here. Honestly, best strategy, give the ball to Steve Swift. He's going to do all the work for you. There go. Great catch there. Seven-yard completed pass. It's Chuck Johnson passes it to Steve Swift, and Steve Swift's gonna run this thing down 26 yards the inside run. Chuck Johnson, obviously, he's no longer with the Florida Fed Boys ever since the second season. But you know, it's still lingering there in the back of his mind. He was called out for being a pedophile during his days in the Fem Boys, and now Chuck Johnson's running this thing and trying to score against his former team. Great play there. Here we go Johnson. Run it to Steve Swift. Steve Swift covering deep. Oh, and immediately that goddamn referee, or that goddamn guy just got tackled for some reason. So much for that one. Chuck Johnson, once again, second and 10. Passes it to Steve Swift. Steve Swift, inside run into the touchdown. 30 yard run, another casual Steve Swift W. They're setting up for a two-point conversion. Maybe handing it to Steve Swift. And that's exactly what they're doing, but Steve Swift could not get it in time. Joe Blair stops him. Minute men. We, we want to defeat, they need to defeat the Fem Boys if they don't want to make them continue to brag about them being better than them. Now it seems like Emmanuel, the wide receiver, will be getting this one. Now Femboys will be receiving the ball. See what Jason Young can do. Passes it to Nate Hudson in the inside run. Gets him though with that 34 yard run. Only a matter of moments before they get near the end zone. Jason Young, star quarterback of the Florida Femboys. Nate Hudson though. Could not get past that guy. Bunch of guys that are benched over there, but they never play. Ready, break. Fight one, two. Fight one, two. Hut, hut. Here we go. Once again, Jason Young, running back, not the running back, but the quarterback taking matters into his own hands. Didn't get a touchdown, though. Maybe if he ran a little bit faster, he would have gotten it. But they got near the end zone. That's all that matters, though. They're at the two. Ready, Got to be careful not to screw anything up or throw an intercepted ball. But Jason Young. Thinking about it, calculating the... Oh, and he gets sacked by Cornell Stevens. Made him lose nine yards this time. Not looking good for the Femboys. With the second quarter and a minute left. Is there Jason Young? Got a guy wide open over there, and he got a touchdown. John Magia, great catch. And the Fem Boys have the opportunity to tie this thing before halftime. Actually, no, not even tie it. Get in the lead. Oh, and it was unsuccessful, though. London Watts stopped them. And now this thing will be tied before halftime, unless the Minutemen can get a touchdown right before halftime. Pick up some momentum, at least pick up some confidence. Oh, juke that guy. Not juke him, but more tackled. Great play there. Incredible. Chuck Johnson. That's an interception, though. Interception. Oh, my goodness gracious. Dan Ford at the final seconds of the game intercepted the ball, and the Femboys are going to take the lead. Now that's how you play. And now they're going for a two-point conversion for good measure. Passes it there, and it's going to be successful. Trent Holland, 14 points for the Fem Boys with the Minutemen at six. And now this is an interesting game, folks. Here we go. 
Stabler, the wide receiver, gets tackled there, though. Honestly, if you're the minute run here, an interesting take. You need to get a touchdown in 31 seconds if they want to at least get back to tying this thing. Chuck Johnson's running it once again, but this time that guy could not cover him, though. Now, 13 seconds on the clock. Each one of these teams still have their timeout before halftime. Surprised they're not using them. Here, Chuck Johnson sees an opening. And now Rod Washington on the field. Out three seconds left. And this time they call for a timeout with the last seconds that they have. Last play of the game before halftime. Here we go, Chuck Johnson. They pass it here to Boren. 10 yards in from a 11 yard catch. So we're gonna take this thing to halftime, folks, with the Ben Boys winning this 14 to six. Forgot who's receiving the ball for the second. Oh yeah, Florida Femboys. Yep, there's an easy chance they're gonna win this thing. Picks it down the field, and it's a touchback. Femboys playing it smart. That interception from the third, from the second quarter, may have been the driving factor to them taking the lead here. And it's an incomplete pass. And Todd Brandt deflected, could not get it. He's so bad. Ready, you know, Jason Young. He's very young in his DFL career. That guy got covered. And Darren, and Jason Young got to run it here, but he saw deep number 53 there. Get him in time. 44 yard run. Defenders nowhere in sight from the Minutemen. They had this issue when they, when they fought last week. You're gonna pass it to John Magia. John Magia, one of the star players of the Florida Femboys, just like that. Easy touchdown, 31 yard catch. And then running it, of course. And they're going for a two point conversion. They want to get as far away from the Femboy, not far away from the Femboy, far away from the Minutemen as possible. Great catch. And it's two points once again. The Minutemen are struggling now, they're gasping for air. And it's a touchback. Femboys going 3-0 for this season so far. Them versus the Danish Lego men are sure to be an interesting game. We don't know what week that will take in. I forgot. We can play there and a nice tackle. Dan Ford deflecting him. I will quickly check the stats on this because I'm very intrigued to see when this game would take place. We go. Oh, and Chuck Johnson gets sacked by Roderick Mitchell. Does not look good for him. Ready, razor, razor. Here we go. Chuck Johnson throwing it on the field. Could not pass it to the wide receiver. Goodness gracious. They're going for the kick on the fourth down, hunting it. And now, Dan Ford receiving it. Ready, break. Down. What are they capable of? Of course, Lego men and Femboys, they don't play against each other until November 21st, which is week nine. So honestly, from here to week nine, anything can happen. Still really pretty too early to call. Here we go, Fem Boys. I'm gonna pass it here right down the middle and John Magia once again running it out on the field. It's going to be a first down. How will this work out for them? How will this affect the Minutemen going into the fourth quarter? Obviously, you know, they're not gonna win this thing now. Still, there we go. Trent Holland gets tackled though. Four yard run. Now, Femboys, they want to humiliate the Lexington Minutemen. And it seems like this week there's been a lot of teams that have been doing, have been having some dominant performances. Wide open was that defense for Jason Young to score one here. 
minute, man. What a fall from grace they had. Now setting up for the kick. Very effortlessly was that kick, and it's good. Good minute, man. They have a minute and 33 to get some done here. But the odds of them winning this thing are very unlikely. Another touchback. Here we go, Chuck Johnson. They get about another wide receiver. Not going well for him here. Steve Swift, though, catches it. And Minutemen call for a timeout. Out of desperation. They know they don't have much time left. They get stuff done. If at all to win this. Johnson thinking about it. Going for the pass to Boren. Another 11-yard catch. Off for the second timeout in a row. They have one more left. That boy's not wasting theirs at all. We passed there. You see Lester Alexander running this thing. Going out on the field near the 25. For a 30-yard catch, and they wasted up their last timeout. With no more left, they got to run this thing in a minute and three. Here we go. Chuck Johnson. And for the pass here to Boren. It's another first down. Minuteman getting closer and closer to a touchdown. They at least want to score before this thing ends. Good Johnson. That's it to Washington. Washington went for an inside run. Unsuccessful for a second and short. 41 seconds. There's no doubt that the Minutemen can get a touchdown here. Matter of the offense. Chuck Johnson passes it to Gorin here, and it's another first down. He got tackled near the end zone, but it was not a touchdown. They are now in the one yard line. And the Minutemen. Chuck Johnson passes it sideways to Lester Alexander, and he gets the touchdown for the team. Minutemen not going to win this, but you know they got the last touchdown of the game. Going for a two-point conversion just for the fun of it. Johnson, right down the middle, and it's going to be successful. Great catch by Chris Warren. Two points on the scoreboard. The Minutemen will take this victory. Go 3-0 for the season so far. 29-14. Having a good first half so far, not even going to lie. But next week, they take on the Growl, if I'm not wrong, and that should be an interesting matchup. So five seconds, four, one, and that's going to be it. That's the end of the game. Ben boys take the victory with the score. What is the final score game? Please tell me. Final score of 29 to 14. All right, coming up next, we got the under, a team that's surprisingly undefeated for some reason. The Loaded Diapers when they take on the team that has not won a single game this season so far. The Bikini Bottom Barnacles. This is their first away game, and let's see how well they can fare here tonight. Bikini Bottom Barnacles. They're playing an away game. Obviously, you know, they got to bring their helmets with them. Their Sandy Cheeks helmets. And immediately gets tackled near the 20. How are the Barnacles going to play in these conditions where you can't see a thing? They can still manage, though. Hank Mays passes it to Andrew Beck. And now Andrew Beck, the running back, has just gone it out of here. Bikini bottom barnacles don't even show up until the 50 yards. They're already off to a great start. Let's go 0 and 3. That was just a lucky start, don't worry. Hank Mays going for a long pass here. Great catch there by McDaniel, the tight end. 21 yard catch. Now let's see what they can do here near the end zone. Passes to Andrew Beck. Running it down the middle. Another touchdown. Not another, but it seems like the first touchdown of the game for the loaded diapers. And now they're setting up the extra point. They're going to play it safe and go for a kick. Nobody to block it, though. And it's right down the middle, and it's good. And now the Barnacles will take possession of this thing. 
a minute after the first quarter. Here we go. London runs it near the 20. And they got 19 yards on that one. Their coach is going to be fuming if they lose another game after tonight. It's like that one Buffalo Bills coach from from Sunday. I can't hear a single word he's saying, but I agree. Yep. We're the best. Best team. That, that, that record, that record speaks Look at that. for itself right now. It's okay. We just haven't had a good start. We're going to come back. Disastrous. I already forgot who they played. No, the, 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 the game that they will finally win is against the, the Pickle Lake Regards. Right now, Jason Smith, great nine-yard run. They're taking things nice and easy. They're not. They're not trying to rush why we're things the best here. Right here. This play, plays like this. Interception. Watch. Watch this. this why we're the best. Ooh. Other teams could never make a play like that. Not a first down, though. But it's a second count. quarter. Doesn't matter. Ready. It's second plays. and two. Just go for an inside run. We're hurting so their guarantee how first good down. we are. Here we go. Joel Kelly, great pass there to Mike Wheeler. Got 12 yards in. No timeouts just yet. Maybe they'll call him a minute into the game. A minute after. Joel Kelly, thinking about it, going for the pass. Great one-handed catch by Mike Wheeler once again. He goes for these successful and impressive catches, but obviously they're not first downs. Be a first they get closer and closer to the end zone. The home team shaking in fear right now. Go for the catch. Easy. Great play there. Easy. Corwin Cates with the touchdown. These people are booing the Barnacles right now. They hate them. They despise them. They know we're They're the best. setting up for the They're kick. Scared. Oh. <laughs> Let's talk about being the best there. Eric Carson just blocked it. And the Barnacles are still losing here tonight. They'll recover in, in halftime. Well, Andrew Beck now running it here. Great. Dodging there. Not enough though. I'm of the opinion that this game may be. Yeah. It's just that the barnacles suck. Nope. Every team is against the barnacles apparently. Oh, great long pass there right down the middle. 31 yards in the field by Derek Rangford. And the diapers called the timeout. With two more left before halftime. And they know that the Barnacles are just going to be playing defense at this point, so they're just wasting the clock. Over the long pass here. Great catch out. 27 yards. Rashard Lawton. Great play there. And maybe the, the Bikini Bottom Barnacles did not, you know, they did not strategize a playbook. Go heading into this game. Right down the middle, and it's going to be another touchdown. William Diamond gets it. It's unbelievable that these people are cheering for a cheating team. <laughs> I can't believe it. Okay, they're going for a two-point conversion. Can they land it, though? Passes it to Lawton, and that guy was just sitting down and did nothing about it. Gets two points on the, on the scoreboard. As this thing goes 6 to 15 before halftime, unless the Bikini Bottom Barnacles can get a touchdown. From what we've seen in these last few games, obviously, it's pretty difficult to do so. With 25 seconds left, this is the point of the game where they're going to waste up all of their timeouts before halftime. Right down the middle, here comes Corwin Case, and Corwin Case is just gone and out of here. 42 yards in. Now they're mad. Now they're pissed off. They were going easy at first, but now they're angry. They got two seconds left. What are they going to do in the final play before halftime? Maybe a touchdown. Going for a long pass here. Thinking about it. Oh, and it was deflected by Eric Carson. Jesus Christ. This thing's going to halftime now. Bikini Bottom Barnacles are struggling here tonight against the team that should be shit, but for some reason are winning. It doesn't matter because Bikini Bottom Barnacles will be receiving the ball in the second half. 
Here we go, London passes it here. Okay, yeah. What is this guy doing? He's running right into them. There was a wide open space on the right that he could have ran and gotten a touchdown. But now let's run right into where all the traffic is. But Joel Kelly pass it to Corbin Cates. Corbin Cates jukes that guy. Jukes that guy. And Corbin Cates has just got it out of here. He's got a cover. There it is. 69 yard run. Funny number into the touchdown. They're done playing around now. They're angry. They've been angry for a while here, but they're going for a two point conversion. Passes it to Corbin Cates. Unsuccessful though. William Tucker stops him. And now the home team will be receiving the ball for the third quarter. Despite Barnacle scoring a touchdown, they still remain in the lead. With an additional three points. Honestly, Barnacles can just can just get a field goal and tie this thing. Or maybe there's a possibility of turnover, fumble, or interception in this play. In one of these plays. Going right down the middle. What were the defenders doing? 51-yard run there. Great play there. Anthony Beck, 112 yards in total from this. And from what I've been noticing is that this team really likes to use inside runs and the Bikini Bottom Barnacles, they don't really have a good playbook for that sort of thing. I guess I spoke too soon because there was a wide open space over there for another goddamn touchdown for the home team. Bikini Bottom Barnacle is going to be the first team with 0-3. and three. What, a, what an accomplishment. Picks it. It's gonna be good. Now Barnacles, what what could they possibly be thinking about at this point? I mean, they could still win this thing. It's obviously not too late. But at this stage of the game, it's very unlikely. Now London ran right into those guys. Got 19 yards in. Ready, Go. Let's see what Joe Kelly can do. Joe Kelly, with the when the pressure is high, passes it to London for a 17-yard catch. Excellent move. Master strategist. Go Kelly, passing it here. Short pass, only four yards down the field. Compared to throwing some long passes, could have ran it, gone a little bit farther. And Bo Kelly. Once again, passing it to the side here. Oh, and it's a fumble. Fumble recovered, though. Bikini Bottom Barnacles get back the ball in time. That would have been a disaster if the loaded diapers managed to get that ball there during the fumble. Luckily, there was a guy that was near them to, you know, get it back. It's like it never happened. Kelly, once again, he's got to think of... Gotta be thinking about maybe going long at this stage, throwing a Hail Mary. And Bryce London with a 12 yard catch. A minute and 39 seconds left before the end of the game. Bikini Bottom Barnacles not doing so well tonight. Great pass there. Wide open, and it might have been tackled. Yeah, it was tackled near the one yard line. They call for a timeout. And honestly, an inside run is their safest bet. They don't need to throw any. They don't need to throw anything here. That's exactly what they're doing. It don't matter though. They got a touchdown. Mike Wheeler, great one, great one yard catch. You really put in those yards there. And they're setting up for a two point conversion. And they get it though. It was unsuccessful. The only way for Barnacles to win this thing is that if loaded diapers somehow Throw an intercepted ball and the Barnacles get possession of it. It seems to not be the case. Here we go. Andrew Beck juice those guys out. It's taken down 19. With a minute and 14 seconds left, loaded diapers are just going to run this clock here. Passes it. Beck, Andrew Beck is just gone. Oh my goodness gracious. Where are the defenders at? 60 yards down the field for the loaded diapers. How is this possible? I genuinely have no clue. They're just having their off week by taking on the barnacles. That's it sideways. 
Derek Langford, another touchdown for the home team. Impressive performance here tonight for the loaded diapers. And now they're going to go for the kick. Can they get it? Right down the middle, it's going to be good. Uni Bottom Barnacles are just going to play for fun at this point because there's no way they're going to win this thing with 46 seconds left. Takes it out of the field. Here you go, London. Running this thing. It's tackled at the 20. With 39 seconds left and only one timeout in your possession, what's there to do anymore? Go Kelly. And the side of the field here and gets tackled near 26 yards on the field. Almost halfway. 47. Here we go, Kelly. Passes it. Great tackle. It's second and short, though. And with nine seconds of this thing in the fourth quarter, it's going to be the last play of the game. Bikini bottom barnacles. Can they at least get a touchdown before the end of the game? And the answer is going to be no as the loaded diapers take the victory here tonight in their home stadium against the bikini bottom barnacles with two seconds left on the clock. What are they going to do here? Joe Kelly thinking of going long here. Oh, and it was an incomplete pass out of desperation. He threw the ball, and he could not get it. As Loaded Diapers defeat the Bikini Bottom Barnacles 29-18. to All right, coming up next, we got an amazing five-star instant classic game between the Gary Pickle Faces and the Tanzania Waka Takas. Both teams, obviously taking each other on for the first time ever since they are, you know, expansion teams for the season. Let's see how well this game's gonna turn out. Let's get this party started as the Pickle Faces play in their home stadium. Quats in the GPF. Tariq Pounds here. Gets near the 25. Look at those amazing stats to start off the game. Go, no. Tucker. Kind of thinking about it. Going long here, an incomplete pass. Gary Pickleface is not doing so well for them right now. Ready, break. But it's way too Ready, early one, to call. Two. One, two. Hut, hut. There you go. Tucker thinking about it. Great pass here to Herman. Tucker once again. Back in possession. Intercepted throw though. And Tay Tucker is in shambles right now. This man already messing up and throwing intercepted balls in the first quarter. Can you imagine how the rest of the game could possibly go? Jovic Swan passes it to Lamont. Linnell Lamont. It'll be stopped though by Chris Connard. With a one yard loss. Waka Talk is near the 43. And they can pick up a victory and go 2-1. and one. Pickle Faces obviously never won a game up to this point. And they're looking to do so tonight. 30 inches. The Waka Takas are definitely a team you don't want to sleep on. Go Swan, pass it to Lone Lamont. And once again, get some clock there. Five yard run. Ready, Brilliant execution of the play here. So Mr. M. Swan passes it to Lamont. Once again, running back is just in possession of for this entire game. And Lonnie Lamont with a 28 yard run. Pickle Ready, faces not play. strategizing for the playbook that Waka Talk has brought out to this game. Setting up for the kick, and it's going to be good. Don't want to dis he doesn't want to disappoint the people of Gary, Indiana tonight. But it may be the case if they can't win this thing. With no more seconds left, as we head to the second quarter. Ready, 
two minutes left. What are they gonna do with these two minutes? Thinking about going long here, maybe it seemed nope. He played it safe and just got it near the first down. Tucker has it to Mr. Lang there. Didn't work out too well. Second and in inches. Ready, break. Ready. Hut, hut. Running it here, Hank. Mr. Hank Jackson, I believe it might be. 12 yard run, and once again, Pickle faces call for a timeout. How will, how will this affect the outcome of the game here? Running here, Mr. Hank Jackson gets a first down though. Taking things nice and steady. Ready, break. Down. Set. Hut, hut. Tucker. Oh, and he gets sacked there by Tra, Tra Robinson there. Made him lose 10 yards though. That is not gonna be pretty. Here we go. Tucker going long here. Wide open. That guy, Mr. Tariq Pounds, 32-yard catch. And now they're near the end zone. Get a touchdown. Here we go. Tucker thinking about it. Off the pass here. Great catch. John Herman. Seems like they might have tied this game, if I'm not wrong. If they can land the kick for halftime, obviously. Oh, and it was unsuccessful. Chavon Carrier blocked it. Making sure that doesn't happen. It's not looking well for them now. Only a one, one point difference though. Not really that far ahead. It's near the 30 though. Pretty good, pretty good around distance. Ready, break. Lonnie Lamont, though, oh, seems like he could have juke that guy up. Oh, he got distracted. Ready, break. Down. Passes it. Great catch there. Mr. Michael Swan passes it to, I guess, Gary Polk. And it's another timeout. Runs it here, and another one taken down. 22 yard catch. Disaster. Going to be halftime though with seems like the, the Waka Takas will be taking the lead with seven. And Pickle Face is just only one point behind at six. Runs it here. 25. Swamp has it to pull, gets tackled though. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Set. Hut, hut. Runs it here, that guy's gone. And now Lonnie Lamont running a good amount of 38 yards down the field. Brilliant play here. Ready, break. it down it's going to be a great catch Ready, break. 
All right, what can Mr. Michael Swan do with this good amount of play in it? Seems like it's not a touchdown, but it's near the one yard line. It's enough for a first down. What are they going to do here? Passes it inside run. Successful one at that by Lonnie Lamont. Two touchdowns for this game here. And if you're the Gary Pickle faces, what do you got to be thinking here? Only third quarter in. Did not block it there, but he managed to get the kick in, and it's going to be good. Not looking so good right now for the home team. It's definitely not too late. It's three pounds. Runs it here only to the 20. A great play there. Not enough though, of course. They got closer and closer to another touchdown. Two seconds left until the fourth quarter. Here we go. Pass it to Brandon and out nine yards. Ten yard catch. Actually, Pickleface has still got a chance to get back in this. They got a chance to win their first game tonight against the Wakatakas. Passes it here. Great tackle. Another one, though. Not enough. Ready, break. Ready. Hut, hut. Hut. By going long here, great catch, though. play there and it seems like it's going to be a touchdown for Brett Brandon 36 yard catch and now the pickle faces have a chance to recover 14 to 12 they're going for a two-point conversion to tie this thing if they land it got a good amount of play here oh and it's going to be a deflected pass Tate Tucker couldn't do it in time and it seems like the Waka Takas are going to take this win here they were close enough, but they could not do it. He kneeled it there. Seems like he's calling for a touchback. Ready, break. Razor, razor. And there's other plans. Hut, hut. He passes, Mike Swan passes it to Watkins here. Try to juke him out. Didn't work out so well. Here, great one handed catch by Mr. Cooper. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. Here we go. It's a down the middle, inside run. Not enough, though. Gabe Polk, eight yard run. Lamont once again, pickle faces defense nowhere to be seen as the Wakatakas get another touchdown on the scoreboard. And they're gonna walk out of here with the victory, it seems. Go kicking it down the right down the middle. And the kick is gonna be good. Wakataka's gonna take this thing 21 to 12. Pickle faces will win eventually, just like the bikini bottom barnacles. And the cool kids clan red names. Running it here, tried to juke him, was unsuccessful. Ready, break. Down. Hut, hut. Passes out on the field. Jesus. Look nasty. Hut, hut. 
Here we go. Hey, Tucker, going long here. Great pass to Tariq Pound. Not enough. Here we go. Hey, Tucker. Get back on long here, and he does. Great shotgun pass there. To John Herman for a 25 yard pass. And that's going to be the end of the game, folks, with the Tanzania Wakatakas winning this thing 21 to 12. And of course, coming up next, our final game of the night, the Naples Menachis taking on the team of the Latvia Eagles. This should sure as hell be an interesting game. We're gonna see how well these two teams will fare against one another. And the Latvia Eagles go 3-0 against the Menachis. <laughs> And they're playing in the Nanachi Stadium or whatever this Michael named the stadium. I don't remember. And the tackle immediately gets into the 20. And 18 yards. Ready, break. They wasted Ready, six break. seconds there. And the Nanachi's Derek Knight, former ball lickers quarterback. Thinking about it here, calculating over the pass to Taylor into a first down. Great 21 yard catch. Good Derek Knight passes it to Wolford. Wolford now the wide receiver running this thing on the field. Oh, and it seems like a bit of a miscalculation when that person got in front of him. Wolford could not get as far as they wanted to, as far as they intended. Derek Knight once again. And by going long, it seems. And it was a successful catch. The defender just kind of fell there for a split second trying to just trying to tackle him. Ontario Price, 44-yard catch. And Anachis will take the lead here against the against the Eagles. And for the inside run, unsuccessful two-point conversion by Gerald McMillan. Stopped him in time. And the Eagles will be receiving the ball once again. Looking to go 3-0. We've already seen the Florida Femboys go 3-0 and the Danish Lego men. They defeated the Washington team and the Minutemen. The Eagles can do the same thing if they defeat the Nanachis. Be interesting if they, you know, somehow manage to get into the Super Bowl. Going for it. It's tackled. Only 24 yards in by Ty Lawrence. Goodness gracious, what can the Eagles do at this stage of the game? Wayne Bannister, the quarterback, passes it out. Interception by the Nanachis by Harris. Gets him. Gets picked off the Wayne Bannister. Not a smart play there for the start of the second quarter. Ready, Ready. Here we go Derek Knight. To get oh and immediately just gets rocked out four yards. Quinton McNeil did not stutter, did not waste any single bit about a time, just getting in the field. You go running it here, and now you see just Higgins now running it down the middle into the 52 yard line. Great play there. Once again, going for the inside run, and of course, there's too many defenders near them. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. Well, Derek Knight running it wide open enough to get a touchdown against the Latvia Eagles. And the first time in a while, the Nanachis dominating here tonight. Interesting take. 12 to 0, not even before halftime. The Eagles might actually, you know, get just screwed here. This Derek Knight could not throw the two point conversion. And now the Lot Eagles, they gotta recover. They gotta get back into this thing. 
They got a minute left before halftime. They got to at least get a touchdown. Eagles have a mountain to climb here. They don't want to lose their 2-0 undefeated streak by losing to the Nanachis here. Ready, break. Ready. But it's definitely a possibility. It passes it down the middle of the field and immediately gets tackled, but it doesn't matter because it's first down. Grant Spielman. Brothers of Jeremy Spielman of the Astolfos, I think. Passes it to the middle of the field that gets blocked off there. Great defensive play by the Nanachis. But still managed to stay in this. Here we go. Wayne Bannister thinking about going long here. Considering he's taking his good amount of sweet time and it seems like he caught it. I don't know what happened there, but Ty Lawrence still managed to get it. It's all that really mattered. Wayne Bannister kind of taking his time here. Doesn't want to rush too too much here. In the course of the game. Passes it sideways. And now you see Trevor Lawrence. Ty Lawrence, my bad. Not Trevor Lawrence. Jesus Christ, we're not we're gonna be copyrighted. They got two seconds left. And they're gonna keep it safe here by going for the kick. And it was it was successful. Seems like PJ Perry barely got it in between there. And he managed to get the field goal. Of course, the Nanachis continue to stay in the lead, continue to drive the course of this game 12 to 3. And now the Eagles, this could be their chance of a comeback in the second half of this game. It's a touchback. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Here we go. Wayne Bannister. He's got to refocus. He's got to regroup against the Nanachis. He can't lose to a team like the Nanachis now. A minute and 41 left. Here we go. Going for the pass here. It's going to be a first down once again, thinking things pretty slowly. Not wasting up too much time. If that's the case, they want to use it to their advantage. Wayne Bannister, think about going long here. Great 27 yard catch for Ty Lawrence. And now out 36, a minute left. And the Naples and the Nachis continue to stay in the lead here. Wayne Bannister going out long. Out of desperation, it was an incomplete deflected pass on part of Troy Finley. And now they are second and 10. Lavia Eagles got to get back in this thing. They got to recuperate. They got to refocus. Focus on the task at hand. Go for the pass here. Great catch. 16 yards there by Robert Cross. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. There's still a possibility of them winning this thing. They gotta be quick. They gotta be sufficient. Wayne Bannister once again. Passes it out to the side. And it's gonna be a touchdown here by Grant Spielman. Great play. Great 20-yard catch. If he managed to get a two-point conversion or at least a field goal. Okay, they're, they're keeping things safe with the field goal. I don't blame them. Going for it. Right down the middle, it's gonna be good. Eagles 10, Nanachis 12. And now the Latvia Eagles, they gotta play good defense. Got a really strong defense. If they want a chance, Jesus Christ just hit the post. Nanachis, two points ahead of the Eagles. So they got a chance. Still definitely messed up, went for the long pass here. Great catch. By Ontario Price. 72 yards in total in the duration of this game. Manachi is looking to win in their home stadium here, and it seems like we will witness that. Eric Knight passes it. Interception by the Eagles. Eagles now. Great interception. Derek Knight might have just costed the team the victory now at this point of the game. Fourth quarter. Eagles now have possession of the ball. They have two minutes to get it done. But they got to be careful here. Passes it to Grant Spielman. Grant Spielman's going to run this thing. Not enough for a first down. Honestly, if you're Wayne Bannister, you got to be careful with these throws. 
Don't want to risk any interceptions or any fumbles. Has it to Grant Spielman going for an inside run. It gets a good amount of uh, first down though. 13 yard run. With a minute and 24 left. Here we go. Bannister has it to try it. Ty Lawrence here and it's another first down. Lavia Eagles taking things nice and simple. Not trying to rush things here. They know that they risk any sort of big plays, any long plays. Got a chance to lose this opportunity. Went for the catch once again near near the near the yellow line, but of course the Eagles gotta call the timeout. If one more left, they gotta be careful when to use it. Wayne Bannister once again. Can he throw the game-winning touchdown for the team? And he does! And the Grant Spielman, 17-yard catch. The Eagles are in the lead now. Brilliant comeback throughout the course of this game. Went from like 14 to 0. Went from like 12 to 0 to now 16 and 12. And a two-point conversion successful. Grant Spielman gets it. Just like that. Only way for this thing to end is if Nanachis tie it which would of course be the result of a touchdown and a failed field goal or a failed two point conversion. With 52 seconds left. It's a dangerous turf for Nanachis. They're the ones that have more pressure towards this game. They need to defeat the Latvia Eagles and their undefeated streak over for the pass here. Great 41 yard catch. Otis Taylor near the 30. And Anachi's calling timeout. Two more left to use. With 37 seconds to get something done. 37 seconds to end the Latvia Eagles undefeated run. Great catch there. Into the tackle. Another one for a first down by Nate Mackey. 27 seconds. 12 yard line. At this point they are destined to get a touchdown here. Going for the long pass, it's another tackle into a first down. Nanachi's calling for another timeout in the last seconds of the game. No more timeouts left. This could be the game winning play for the Nanachis. Lavia Eagles here. Gotta be careful, go for the pass and it's gonna be a touchdown. Ontario Price, five yard catch, wins it for the Nanachis. They will go two and one for the season now. And so will the Latvia Eagles. But if they fail the two point conversion here, oh, and it seems like not, the Nachis are gonna win this thing here. But there's 11 seconds left. It's interesting to see what they could do in 11 seconds. What are they gonna do? They're gonna go for a touchback. The Nachis, could you imagine if they failed that field goal there, would have tied this thing into overtime. But the Latvia Eagles, Last play of the game here. Can they do it? Doesn't seem so that a one second left. He got tackled a second before the game and ended. And now we're at the last play of the game. Latvia Eagles have got to throw a Hail Mary if they want to win this game. Here we go. Being careful. Oh, he's running it. He's running it here. Oh, unsuccessful out of desperation. Could not get the touchdown. And the Naples Nanachis are going to take home the victory at a score of 19 to 18. It was a very close game. And at the end of the day, Nanachis take the win. We thank you for joining us, everybody, and have a good one.